Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything horror. I'm your host, Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. Back at it again. We are back. And this week, we are talking about some of the horror conventions we want to attend for 2019. Uh, We are coming pretty close in the next couple weeks of uh, horror conventions starting to come around. Um, Actually, no, a couple months, should I say. Uh, The first horror convention that I'm well aware of is Monster Palooza. Definitely. And that is when? April? I think that's what we said during our live stream. April, I think 14th to the 16th, I want to say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's coming up. Uh, and then after that usually is Monster Palooza, which is, or no, it's uh, Midsummer Scream, which is, of course, in the summertime, uh, Midsummer. Uh, tends to title Midsummer Scream. And that gets you prepared for all the haunts, uh, haunt season, about a month and a half away. And then we got Scare LA, which is usually about a month or in the in between haunt season. And then we got Son of Monster Palooza, which usually wraps up either during haunt season or after haunt season. So yeah. um, those are all the ones we really want to check out. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. I've only been to two out of the four. Okay. So I'm going to talk about as best as I can with the other ones. Uh, Monster Palooza last year uh, was pretty cool. They did a Killer Clowns from Out of Space 35th anniversary or 30th anniversary, 35th, 30th. Um, anniversary uh, panel okay, with the creators and stuff like that. So that was cool to check out. I, I would love to see that. But Monster Palooza always has a lot of cool guests that come down. Oh, really? Um, either people who've played like Jason in the past or Michael Myers in the past or like oh. famous horror icons from okay. movies and stuff like that. A lot of cool panels. Um, they usually have a lot of like makeup and uh, masks artists and stuff out there and Super sound cool. and stuff, vendors and stuff like that. But uh I think this time around, if I do go, I want to start doing interviews for uh, Horror Icon Mashup and uh, just timelines of people who want to see stuff and stuff like that. Um, just interviewing people of their experience with horror, stuff like that. Uh, maybe shoot like a nice little... My One of my goals is I want to shoot like a horror documentary of what, what drives people to watch horror and stuff like that. You okay. Know? So that'd be pretty cool to do, but just to kind of hang out with everyone, see the fans and stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think it would be fun to obviously see our fans and yeah. um, and then, you know, just, I don't know, get immersed in the community and meet people and see what connections can be made and see how, you know, just by meeting a couple people, see how that can really transform and evolve the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know me and my dad and my cousin are going to be attending Long Beach Comic Con uh, February 16th media. Uh, so if you guys are at Long Beach Comic Con on February 16th, come check us out. Uh, and then we're going February 15th to a comic creator uh, day, which is going to be at sale of the Long Beach Comic Con. Um, and if you guys are there, uh, we're going to be trying to get, we're going to try to be getting some cards together and stuff so we can try to get our, our comic un- up and launching this year, hopefully. Um, but we're going to go down there and see what's up. It's going to be me, my cousin, and the comic book owner that we're writing the comic with. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be a cool weekend, so come see me, see us if yeah. you're there. Uh, we'll be rocking the Knights of Horror gear. Definitely. Uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited for Monster Palooza, though. I, I really want to check it out. It's in Pasadena, California, um, and I'm always hearing good stuff about it. Last year, they, I think, announced um, a scare zone for HHN, and they announced, uh, they touched a little bit more on the Stranger Things announcement they did the week prior. So Okay. Uh, usually conventions like this, we get some announcements, which is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's going to be exciting, especially with, you know, horse season Honestly, just around the corner. Yeah. Just around the corner. I mean, now. I know we're in January, but it comes by fast. October like will be here in a blink of an eye. Especially. Yeah. Um, the next convention we're going to talk about midsummer stream, which I did attend last year for the first time ever. And that was fun. Um, we went Sunday, but Sunday we didn't really we didn't really get to walk around too much because we were so uh, immersed with the panels that day. That was all the major panels that day. We had the Horror Made Here panel, we had the Queen Mary panel, and we had the Halloween Horror Nights panel, which we all attended. So we barely had time to actually walk around because by the time we got out for the panel, 
We had maybe about a couple minutes to walk around, but then we had to go wait in line for the next one, and especially for the Horror Nights panel because that one was like the biggest one, the biggest wait to, to wait around with. And that was honestly a really good panel. That was um, the guy who runs stuff in Orlando, Mike Aiello, with uh, our crew over here, uh, uh, John Murdy and Chris Williams, who run HHN over here, the uh, creative director and the uh, the guy who pretty much designs everything too and everything like that, Chris Williams. He's, he's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it has, I, I liked Midsummer Scream because they did, um, they did mazes, little home haunts and stuff like that. So you got to see people, uh, be creative with their mazes and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. It'd be super exciting, um, to go through, just be able to go through them and yeah, and I feel not like even that really that gets you hyped. It really, I feel like that gets you hyped. It's what probably, was that in August or like August, July? Yeah. So now even then October's September, October is really close. Yeah. Gets you really hyped up Get you hyped for the maze. Yeah. Stuff. You've probably got a ton more announcements by that point And, oh yeah. Um, so, uh, you so got that's to gonna see, be great. You got to go through a lot of home, like these are mostly like home haunts and stuff like that, or, or private industries or, you know, like low budget industries that put together these haunts and put up these haunts and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, we went through a lot of those. Um, but they have, of course, they got vendors, uh, like I said, and they have, the, of course, all the, all the makeup artists and all the, the famous people. Um, Linda Blair was there Saturday. We didn't, oh. get to, we didn't get to go. Oh, that's really cool. And, you know, we just watched The Exorcist recently, so it's like... Definitely. That was pretty cool. Um, and then they had the... Uh, they had a reunion panel for the, I think, the 25th or 20th anniversary of Hocus Pocus. Oh, so really? That, that was cool. Definitely. So if you're a that's fan of that favorite. movie, yeah, if you're a fan of that movie, it's like that. That's cool. I mean, I was a fan of that when I was a kid too. You know, I haven't seen it in a bit, so I'm gonna have to probably watch it next Halloween. But that was really cool to see that. Um, but they just had so much cool stuff to do there. I got to meet John Murdy there. I actually got to meet the. I saw the league there. They were cool. And then I saw SoCal Exploring. Got to hang out with him a little bit. Awkward Arsic. Like all the YouTubers that I, I collabed with in the in the past, they were all just there, just chilling and being cool and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Uh, a couple fans came up, so that was really cool to always meet fans and stuff like that. Just the fact that you have that interaction with fans that who watch your content and then they actually come up to you and say hi and stuff is. It was a re- it was a surreal moment for me because I was like the first fan that ever came up to me and said, "Oh, I actually watch your content and this is cool and stuff like that." And it was just like it was really cool. Yeah, I'd be definitely that'd be definitely pretty cool if I could just ha- get happens if, at one of the events that I go to. Yeah, so I'm gonna get some nice horror shirts made and stuff like that. So yeah. it'd be cool. Um, then we went to uh, Scare LA. Scare LA. I went with Athena, and that was very fun. That was at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Monster Palooza, Pasadena Convention Center, Midsummer Screen, Long Beach Convention Center, and uh, Scare LA, Los Angeles Convention Center. Um, and that was fun. It wasn't as big as Midsummer Scream. I, I enjoyed Midsummer Scream more. Um, they have a better setup there, but it was still fun. Uh, Scare LA. We got there pretty early, and we mostly just went for the HHN panel that day. Um, but we got there early. We we chilled. We got our tickets, and we uh, we saw the league again, and we saw SoCal exploring again, and a couple fans came up to us, and that was pretty cool. We went through some of the mazes, which were pretty cool. Um, and then uh, we sat down for the HHN panel, and we uh, it was probably the best one. They were uh, they had just announced the Universal Monsters maze that they did last year. Uh, that week and then they uh, elaborated on it more so they showed um, new concept arts and then Slash came out uh, he did, super effort. yeah Slash came out and he did the music for it and so they previewed a lot of the music for the maze and stuff like that which was cool um, and we just had a blast though dude I, I think you'll actually enjoy Scarlet. it's a lot smaller than Midsummer Scream but it's still fun definitely you know I, I think you know as I get more and more immersed and learn more about the horror industry and yeah, you know about haunts and all these different things. You know, I'm pre- pretty stoked to be able to sit at these conferences and like these Just conventions and yeah. really be like, okay, like this is cool. Like this is what to expect. Because like obviously it's cool just going to the haunts in general. Yeah. But to know like okay, like this is like behind the scenes. This is behind stuff. the scenes. Like this guy's been working on this for like four months and yeah. like. So like, like right now, if you want to, if if you also want to keep up with like well, because I keep up with the horror nights and stuff mostly, but if you want to keep up with the horror nights on their Twitter page, he like always teases like, like he started writing stuff as twenty nine twenty eighteen event was going on. Yeah. For next year, because he's got to, as as the time goes, he's got to. You got to imagine if he's gonna do movies and stuff, he's gonna get the rights to these properties. Definitely. And then he's got to start uh, writing out uh, 
kind of a concept of how he wants everything. Yeah, I got to do like, sketches and stuff. Like a, like a script in a way, you know. He's got to write the script and then he's got to storyboard it. Yeah. Each scene. Um, and then he's got to watch the movie and, and, and print out a bunch of pictures of different uh, scenes and stuff like that so they can bring to life, how they can bring them to life and stuff like that. Then you also have to build it. <laughs> build it, uh, you know, all the costumes, masks, uh, props. It's, it's a lot of work going into, and it takes a full year just to do. Yeah. So I think he's, like, on his fourth or fifth maze right now, still just writing away. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, I can guarantee you probably next year we'll get Stranger Things Season 2. As a maze. Well, definitely. I think, I think probably the two probably the locks that I'm thinking for next year in terms of just horror nights is Stranger Things Chapter Two. There's no way that they don't capitalize on how much money they made off of last year. Oh yeah. Because I mean, obviously, you mentioned and everyone I've talked to, longest maze line, longest maze line every night, uh, and pretty much the face and merch. A lot of the merch was basically yeah. all. And everyone knows Stranger Things. It's one of the most streamed and binge well, that, watched shows. And that was the thing that brought the audience to the event this year was the fact that everyone knew this property that they capitalized on that to bring more guests in. A lot of fans who came this year were probably a majority just Stranger Things fans. Yeah, I think, and I think the second lock is Halloween 2018. If that doesn't happen, yeah, I would be shocked, especially with Murdy. From what I understand, really, like, I want to do all of the Halloweens. Yeah, that. You have to do the new one. On top of that, he's been working with Blumhouse. Like, Blumhouse will give him scripts to, like, things before anybody. And, yeah. and then, like, a lot of the mazes he does based off uh, the Blumhouse films, he'll say, like, I get the script, I read them, and then I start drawing them out and stuff like that. So there's scenes in some of the mazes that you'll see that aren't in the movie, but they were in the script. Yeah. And I thought they were they were worthy for a maze. Uh, perfect example is he did that last year for a nun scene in Truth or Dare, where in Truth or Dare you saw the nun kind of go ballistic and kill somebody. Yeah. Um, and they didn't show that in the movie, but they showed that in the maze, which was really cool. So Definitely. And, and you know, I really appreciated um, the idea of him adding on. You know, there's a Blumhouse little – trailer thing that you see in the beginning with the chair oh yeah yeah so and yeah then, like he's, he's like okay like i'm gonna take something people know and yeah. just make it my own spin it that was the uh that was the uh the closing the, of it, the right? closing of the maze it was an original ending um yeah he took the intro for blumhouse if you guys don't know the chair spinning and the little girl in the haunted house and stuff and he just kind of put a twist on it and it, it was really cool so I think that's what I'm really I'm really excited for when it comes to the conventions and really just hearing how behind the scenes just stuff. hear all the behind the scenes and like really get that grasp. I mean, obviously I'm gonna be terrified out of my mind when I probably go through these things and not really get to be able to enjoy them all. Yeah. But like I really felt like if I would be able to like go through them and really just take my time and really see all the creative power behind it, it's yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. No, yeah, and that's and that's the cool thing about these conventions is uh, if they do panels that talk about mazes, usually they give you an inside look of how it's being done. Yeah. So like when they when they were showing a lot of stuff for Universal Monsters, they were showing like sculpts of stuff. They were showing like concept art of how they want stuff done. They were showing off uh, pictures of how they got inspiration to bring stuff like outside of the maze there was like spray paint art and everything and they said that there's this one i think cemetery in like like i think spain or like paris or something like that probably where, France, probably. probably where they there's spray paint everywhere or no it's jim morrison's grave how it's got it's spray painted all over the place for like jim morrison and all that yeah so they took inspiration from that and they kind of just spray painted like the monster stuff on it on and their maze and stuff like that which was really cool but you get to see like where they get inspiration from, where you know where their mindsets at. It's a lot of concept arts that usually sometimes make the maze or don't make the maze, but it's just cool to see all that behind yeah. the scenes stuff. Um, but these panels are fun to sit down in. You just gotta get there early if you want a good seat and stuff like that. Especially if we're gonna be filming, we gotta get like a good area where we can set up the camera and just kind of you know yeah. sit down and just kind of enjoy the maze, uh, the content and stuff like that. Um, the next event we're gonna be talking about is uh, the last event would be Son of Monster Palooza. Okay. An event I have not been to, but that's I think it's smaller than Monster Palooza, uh, but it's about the same concept. But they do it during Halloween time or after Halloween time. But it's a pretty cool event to go to. You get to just kind of see and just chill, and that's one of the that's like the post haunt event. So you get to kind of just stay in the Halloween vibe, but you just kind of get to hang out and just see all the famous actors, like I said, who've been for horror icons, or yeah, you know, you get to see uh, live makeup demos. Those are always cool to check out and. Uh, you get to see a lot of, uh, you know, people in costumes. You see a lot of, like, masks that are being sold and stuff like that, which I think are really cool. But, um, yeah, man, these conventions are fun, and I really want to try to get media for all of them if I can. 
um, this year especially because uh, I didn't really capitalize on that too much last year, or if I did, I, I did it too late. But I really want to capitalize it on this year so we can get some interviews in, hopefully, and just you know get a lot of stuff going and stuff like that. So. And definitely, and I think it's just to bring content to our fans. Yeah, you know, especially you know, the content too. That's what I want to do is just get more interview content and just content in general, maybe get people's reactions and stuff. Yeah, definitely, because, I mean, not everyone gets the opportunity to be there, especially, you know, when it comes to money and things like that. Yeah, so... Or just time and location. Yeah, so if we can bring the uh, the content to the people who are not fortunate enough to make it, just to uh, show them, like, this is, this is it right here, so you guys can still get uh, idea of what this is and stuff like that, that'd be really cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. But I'm very much looking forward to 2019. Hopefully it's going to be our year. Uh, actually, it is going to be our year. No, no, it is going to be our year. It is going to be our year. But, uh, yeah, guys, thank you for listening to another episode of My Lost Heart Podcast. It's probably going to be the shortest one out of all. We were just yeah. kind of talking about conventions and stuff like that. But um, let us know in the comments what conventions you're looking forward to and yeah. what else you're looking forward to. Uh, if there's a convention that we didn't bring up in the podcast, let us know in the comments and tell us a little bit more about it. Definitely, yeah. And uh, let us know what you like about the conventions and what you look forward to. And if you have any tips or tricks, let us know. and We'd, we'd be happy to, to read those. and For sure, for sure. And partner with you on them. Of course. So uh, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Mindless Sword Podcast, and we'll see you next week. Bye.